All right, good evening. This is Ken at Tortoise Capital, uh, year-end edition of the Nightly Strategy Podcast, December 31st, 2022, looking at swing trade frames. Uh, we'll start off with the uh, RL30 slope Z-scores of the sectors. And uh, we've got uh, really all the sectors converging on the pullback that we've had you know, the past 10 days. Uh, converging pretty tightly given the uh, uh, the lack of range of the last uh, 10 days and lack of volatility. So this is sort of end of year uh, range compression. Uh, I just would notice that it is postured as a, uh, like a kata two almost for you know the the market did not melt down going into the close of the year. It was it gave back some and some backing and filling, but it doesn't look. There was no evidence of panic selling this last week. Um, not much to choose from between um, the defensive uh, sector of XLP, the staples versus the consumer discretionary, although the tie goes to the runner and it's XLP is leading the way. And a lot of this is some tech related things that were weak as well. So the more speculative pieces get uh, smacked around quite a bit. And again, XLY is hindered by its two top holdings, Tesla and Home Depot, which uh, which have been relatively weaker than the market the last couple of weeks. So that explains most of that. Uh, take a look at a number of offerings from Charles here. So we're looking at Apple. This is our weekly, daily, and 65-minute or hourly. <coughs> uh, you can see that Apple has really been disappointment on the long term uh, for all of uh, 2022, like much of the tech sector. Um, this last little bit of selling past two weeks uh, has made it pretty bad, uh, except for traders where it's poised nicely for a compound critical state, uh, ready to break in either direction. That's a significant move to get back to 150. Uh, and then the breakdown here has no support for uh, quite a while until it gets over to uh, about 123 and uh, 118. So there's um, there's at least a move down to here and here uh, baked into the cake. Um, I like the uh, I like the bracket. Uh, I think getting short here triggers off the RL10. So that's sound. You could even think about a second position here if it fails below about 126.5. Uh, to the upside. Uh, per personally, I, I don't know. I don't know if I want to wait that long to get into it, to be honest. Uh, I think I, with a, um, with an R10, I think I might be able to get in a little sooner on a three minute and then play that as a turbo. And then if it does get to here, which clears this resistance, uh, then you can play that kind of safely to here. But I, I, I would like to be ready for... A strong move in technology early next week uh, because tech has been beaten so badly about the head and shoulders. I think I'd be, uh, I might be prepared for that. Uh, it's kind of the same pattern in uh, AMD, the semiconductor advanced micro. Uh, although you'll notice that uh, it has suffered more than Apple in the, uh, in weakness, and this is really a measured. Uh, measured move down to support. Uh, and so this is a nice critical state. And if it can break through that uh, PSR, well, a run to about 77 is certainly in order on the daily. Uh, this makes a nice intraday turbo. I think, again, I would be ready to go as soon as it breaks the peak of this RL10 instead of waiting for the full box to get long here. I think I want to get long here uh, so that if it only gets to 68, 
uh, I get that move rather than this move. So I would recommend you, if you have some, if you're able to be in the markets, uh, that's that's a real opportunity for a turbo. Otherwise, I think that's a reasonable entry if you're going to just play the hourly and are just checking in mechanically. That's fine. Uh, and then I think your target is up here at 72. The peak of the uh, <coughs> peak of the <coughs> peak of the dragon. HWM uh, and I've never heard of these guys, but um, Aerospace, Diversified, and boy, they sure look good. Whereas the other two tech companies were really suffering. These guys have been motoring through and generally up, although there has been some volatility in here. It has really resolved to the upside, and that's really a positive move for the year. And the daily really shows the strength. And it's poised at an all-time high. And just more coming. So I love this setup. And um, uh, what makes me really want to be on the long side on this one is these rising lows. That's just nothing but kata twos all the way up. Um, and so breaching, you know, that level should really send it off. Uh, this is a tougher one to sell on the short side, although I think you you might see a move down to 38 you know, from here. Um, but if you got short here and it showed sign of, of holding right here, I wouldn't stick around with it because that's really a buy, that would be a buy on dip opportunity, which, which did that the last time it was there. So that, that looks like the key. Um, so I think you could get short here, but I would really be prepared to stop and reverse back to the upside. Uh, if it breaks below 38, that looks like a free and easy run to 37 and a quarter, which looks like the the serious, significant, long-term support. That's like right here. Uh, it's had a strong move off of that. So I would be surprised to see it get there. But if it got there, I'd be even more surprised to see it fail because this has been nothing but buying pressure the whole way up. Uh, this one looks like something that really wants to go. So I think for, as a long-term position, uh, let's see how it gets started in the new year that you may be tapped into something uh, very strong there. Uh, Dan, <coughs> uh, this is Boeing. Hey, I, I got you on the line. So help me understand what the uh, what the yellow dot me Was this a planned... Yeah, this was uh, the one we discussed two weeks ago. This was was that an entry or was that just a planned entry? A planned entry, yes. And what does the red dot represent? Uh, that was where I uh, might have sold it. Oh, uh, okay. If there had been a, a trailing stop, if yeah, you had entered here, that's that would have been the logical I wouldn't have wanted place to, to give sell. up the. Yeah. I wouldn't have wanted to give up that two R. Yeah, yeah, because uh, it had this nice little bump, bump yeah. and run up in here. Okay, got it. Uh, just I wasn't sure how to read the. Uh, how to read that chart. Um, and then Boeing has really compressed into a, uh, like a Z3P right here and ready to break out uh, and, and just go. I think with a nice, what, $2 stop, maybe 250 Yeah. Uh, that's in good shape. And that, but then if this breaks, you know, uh, 188 is, uh, that's the PSR itself. And then I would say 180, 175 are both in play on the downside. So I like, yeah, I like Boeing. Uh, this this was one of the strongest stocks anywhere. I mean, we've been throwing money at the Defense Department for Ukraine, and I don't see any change to that policy. Um, both political parties are trying to outspend the other in this area, and Boeing is going to continue to benefit. So I think that's a... A good high priority swing. Uh, Caterpillar is uh, kind of a bellwether in the industrials, and it's been doing really well, just like uh, Boeing. It's the second strongest stock. It resolved all of this tension to the upside, even though it pulled back a little bit. That little bit of a pullback is what's given you this opportunity here uh, to create a nice trade. Um, 
you know, closed closed here. So yeah, getting long about two forty. Yeah, for the turbo then at twenty one for two forty one fifty for a swing. Yeah, I, I like that one. Um, this has been this has been really strong. This is a measured pullback. It was stronger than the market. You know, the market sold off more than Caterpillar did. So if there's any kind of strength, uh, that should really go. Uh, so yeah, I like that one. I'd rather play that one the long side than the short side, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Um. I I'd I have a hard time seeing getting short sooner than two thirty seven fifty. Yeah, you know, is that is that what that red box is showing? Yeah, that's um, that's the that risk be the box. buffer. Yeah, that's the risk box. It's uh, basically the R three. I think okay. I may have given it a little more yeah. than R three to get under that. Um, okay. That so tail, you but... you're looking at being short two thirty seven fifty five. Oh oh no no the red box is just showing um uh, that's showing my frame my um my risk box and my uh, oh. two to one reward okay. to risk. Oh, okay. So you're long here. Yeah. With a reasonable target to there. Yeah. So one and two. Okay. Got it. Yeah. And that's uh, the, that would be the I, level of risk. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now, are, would you, would you plan to go short if it broke two thirty seven fifty? Um, I hadn't thought that, about that. Uh, but, but, um, I think there's uh, better, to be honest, I think there's better targets to be short than the second strongest member of the Dow, to be honest. That, yeah, that that's uh, that's the thing. Um, yeah. Although it is a reasonable short, it uh, I, it looks uh, off the top of my head like I could get two to one reward to risk short on it as well. Yeah, the only thing I would worry there is it's been so strong. I don't like just stopping and reversing to go short the strongest stocks and the strongest sectors because yeah. to me, your real target is just right there anyway. So if you're getting short here, it's going to run into significant resistance at about 236. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, I see that. Yeah. Now. Uh, yeah. yeah. I was looking at the big red bar under it, but we got that green bar next to it. The, yeah. The, the yeah. I just, yeah. I, I don't think, I just think there's, I think there's better shorts in here. Yeah. No, I, I like um, the next I one. <laughs> I hadn't even thought about a short <laughs> like, for a caterpillar. Like but this if one. The, if the markets and the industrials were, were weak. Rivian's going to be really weak. I know you're kicking yourself on this one. Oh yeah, that was a stupid mistake. <laughs> um, I I I I um I was day trading it and swing trading it, and uh, I yeah. I um I got um mixed up. Um, got all got out of everything. Yeah. Well, uh, this one, you know, Rivian, you know, one big splurge and then drift, a smaller splurge and then drift one little surge so to me yeah this this one is begging to get short um 1780 that's as good a sign as any i would almost if i was going to make this a high pry i might put my little box like that and mm -hmm. then try to take advantage of that move there because yeah, i sure. think this thing i think this thing could get crushed yeah uh, and then i and then that would let you put a second position here that's what I was thinking. That's why I said turbo yeah. territory. It's turbo territory up there yep. right now. Yep. Uh, tactical space, you call it. So Yeah, this is where yeah. I think that the swing is clearly indicated. And then I think you could almost put a second yes. position on because of this. Because yes. that, that breaks below this one at 17 and 17.50. And then that's just in free fall. And you can see this thing just wants to fail. So yeah, if you get, if, you know, if we saw any kind of weakness on Tuesday, that could be short one, short two, short three, and then keep use that to fund the swing trade. So I like that one short. Mm -hmm. uh, Chevron has been really good uh, in this little surge in the energy uh, the last few days. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So that's been. That's been as strong as the energy sector. Energy has had a nice little... I mean, this is why you love energy. When it swings, it swings hard. And it's only halfway back up the stack. So this could get all the way up into the, you know, north of 190. So, I mean, this is a reasonable uh, two units of reward to 184, which gets it up kind of into this, you know, this territory here. Mm-hmm. 
but um, 186 and 190 are certainly within reach. So, yeah, just I would just keep watching, keep watching USO and XLE, and if and if uh, Chevron is 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 greater than those two, then that's uh, that's about as low risk a play as there is. Yeah, I like that one. You can see right here, you know, the power of, of the PSAR flips. Mm -hmm. You know, the Kata 2 would be nice here. And it's only halfway up. It's only halfway up the stack, so you're really playing for this extra piece, you know, with a tight stop. So, yeah, you're in good shape on that one. You know, the same thing, that stopping and reversing on that one or, or going short on that one. Uh, I, I would be watching XLE or oil itself. I think those are better shorts than Chevron, which has been a really strong large cap. It, it's uh, It'll be harder to shake people out of a Chevron position than oil traders directly. Okay, Walt Dismal. This has been a horrible, horrible stock for a horrible, horrible company. You know, I hate these guys. So, yeah, uh, I think this one, uh, I think that's waiting too long to be decisive to the short side. Uh, you know, the the RL10 turn is right about here at about 86. Okay. And one of the advantages of <clears throat> using the regression line as the, um, uh, as the true price is that yeah, you don't know how much, volume was transacted in here but the rl10 shows you what the smooth price is so anything below 86 is the target and that saves you two bucks yeah it saves that's... you two dollar difference and so getting short at 86 uh would get you in like right here and and that's about what this what that entry gets for you oh that's the uh that black line i think that's the rl30 and the blue one's the RL10. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. All. Okay, okay. so that's about 85.30. That's right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah, either one of those either one of those is where it statistically turns instead of waiting for that one little... Like, you don't know how much volume was in that little sell-off. So the, the, uh, the true price at about, let's call it 80, 86 even... Uh, is really all of this. Yeah. So instead of waiting for this price to trigger, you'd rather be short, for example, like I want to be short right here. Oh, yeah. Uh, that might have been some kind of typo uh, because I definitely saw the collapsing dragon where you marked it at 85 yeah. there. Yeah. It, by 85, it would be... Um, it would be closing below that. Um, yeah, it's below closing below RL10. the uh, yeah, it's closing below the PSARs and the RL10. So yeah. that's about eighty five thirty. Yeah, that's about where I want to be. I want to be short. Now, if you notice this one little sharp move way up in here, <clears throat> if like if it gapped down to here and then started selling off, try and I would it. I I'd be short right there. Uh huh. Yeah. And then add a second position at 85.30, and then a third position probably here. Would you would you do the swing trade up there at um, uh, at 86 uh, 86 uh, 16? I guess it is. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I yeah, I, okay. I think I I would just I would plan on I would put a turbo position on it, mm -hmm. and then just plan on keeping 20 percent because if that if that violates, it will have already fallen this far. And that thing is going to fall down here, and it'll close somewhere around in here. So I would just plan on keeping twenty percent of that, because what that'll look like is uh, lower high, and then it couldn't hold, and it starts selling off, and that'll just look like a disaster, because you got these two, you got those lower highs already. So if it uh -huh. can't hold here and starts failing, that's going to look really weak on the daily, and there's nobody that believes in that stock right now. And if they do, they're going to be chased out of it right here at 85.30. Yeah. Which is this one. So if it gets below 85.30, this was noise. And that thing is failing hard. 
So it would so, be a great short, even on a lower open, and certainly. Oh yeah, at yeah. If it, yeah, if it gaps down and starts selling, now in a perfect world, you would see SPY down, and Disney down, uh, and yeah. Disney even is down even worse. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I would be heavily short here, second position, third third position, and then uh, hope to see a lot more of this. Because that below eighty six is already below the weekly low. Yeah. So I, you know, that one should like I would, I'd be playing that forever instead of trying to get short caterpillar. Oh, I wouldn't get short. You know I mean? yeah. yeah, absolutely. You're just asking to get punched in the face with caterpillar. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. That's um. That's everything I got for tonight. Um. I was going to cover, I had some discussions with my brother a little earlier today on um, the RL10s and uh, Bollinger Bands. I may end up recording something on that, but uh, actually I'll probably just do that tomorrow. I, I'm going to go up and I can hear him getting ready to pop the champagne. We're going to, we're going to celebrate on London time or something, so we get to bed <laughs> a little earlier. <laughs> go for it. <laughs> All right. Hey, uh, take good care. We'll, we'll, yep, you uh, too. we'll see you tomorrow. See you. Uh, yep. Ciao. Happy New Year.